on the western shore of the Caspian Sea between Russia to the north and Iran to the south is the ancient and modern nation of Azerbaijan. Hello, I'm Nancy Perlman. On this edition of Eco News, we travel from the deserts to the mountains to see the diverse ecological areas and meet the many different ethnic groups among the over 9 million people. Stay with us. Here in Azerbaijan, this ancient and modern country has so much to offer and first-class accommodations for the tourists, including the Shaki Palace Hotel. The Lahiji people are a unique ethnic group. Their village here of Lahij is over 1,700 years old. They still have the main road, but now it's a two-way street for cars. This is the village of Lahij. It's situated in the Ismaili district. Its altitude is 1,211 meters above the sea level. The village population currently is nearly 860 people, although it was much larger in the 19th century. The village was built around the 7th and 8th centuries and is one of the most ancient settlements in the country. The villagers are considered a separate ethnic group with their own distinct language due to their mountainous isolation in the Caucasus. There are many legends as to where the villagers came from. Many scientists believe that they came centuries ago from Persia, where they were refugees from earthquakes and other conflicts. Throughout the region, the people have been known for their handmade crafts. There are three main quarters in the village determined by the craftsmen, copper workers, potters, and blacksmiths. Each section has its own mosque, bathhouse, and square. The handmade crafts have been exported throughout the Caucasus and into neighboring countries, Turkey, Iran, Russia, and Georgia. Many different herbs for tea. Until 1969, there were only two roads. When President Aliyev came to power after independence from the Soviet Union, he ordered a new modern highway to connect Lahij more easily with the rest of the country. The houses in Lahij have their own architectural style. They were built out of gray river stone. The unique construction protects the homes against frequent earthquakes. It involves layering stones on top of each other using wood dividers and not using cement. This construction has been copied throughout the country to maintain buildings from earthquake damage. Today, tourism is the main economic driver. Craftspeople make beautiful items for locals, Azerbaijanis, and foreign tourists. There are so many superbly made products that it is hard to choose which to buy.
After a day of shopping and meeting the local people, we had a delicious dinner outside overlooking the river and listening to the call to prayer. We are now currently in the Girdiman Valley, which is situated in the Ismaili district of Azerbaijan. The river that is behind me is uh, also called uh, Girdiman. Tourists enjoy traveling through this canyon, which is about 4,500 feet above sea level. Many people enjoy walking across the suspension bridge built by Sarvan villagers to get to their homes. Back in the third century, this region of Azerbaijan was originally part of one of the first Christian states in the Albanian Caucasus. We're now entering a new district here in the minor Caucasus Mountains. This area is famous for an ancient Christian culture that existed until the seventh century. The village of Kish has one of the oldest Christian churches in this region. It was built in the first to second centuries, was actively used until the eighth century, and then abandoned for almost 1,200 years. But now it's a museum. While Azerbaijan is a secular Muslim country, the government protects the right and heritage of the religious minorities. Currently, about 5% of the population are Christians. In Kish, the Christian Albanian Church was one of the very first Christian churches in the region and the world. This one was built around the first and second centuries. We should not confuse the current country of Albania with the Albanian Caucasians, which is a different group of Albanians. Because the area is in the highlands, nomadic people such as the Turks, the Arabs, and the Mongols were not able to easily occupy this place. But in the 8th century, there was an Arab conquest which resulted in Islam becoming the dominating religion. This Albanian Caucasian church stopped being used, but today has been turned into a museum. A crypt with burials from the 2nd to the 12th centuries, we have the history of Caucasian Albania, information about this project here in Kish, very informative ancient artifacts. There are interesting theories about the ancient population. During excavations of the church, they found graves of people who were presumably the priests, and they were over six feet tall, much taller than the average person of the Caucasus, but very European in look. Another interesting theory was proposed by the famous Norwegian explorer, scientist, and anthropologist Thor Heyerdahl. He believed that the Scandinavian people came from the Caucasus. In the 1990s, he visited this church as well as the Gobastan National Park and concluded that the stone carvings of boats resembled the Scandinavian boats. Here you can see a stone found in Mingachevir. It was brought here. Uh, it has Albanian scripture on it. Albanian Caucasian is no longer being spoken. There are, however, some languages that exist that were derived from this older language, such as the endangered Udi language. Because the main language is no longer in use, it is considered extinct. We do know that Albanian Caucasian came from the Northeast Caucasian language family. 
and because there is no written translation or interpretation for the 72 letters, or an aid such as a Rosetta Stone, the scriptures have yet to be translated. Along this wall are architectural models of other Christian churches that can be found throughout this region. The Hinalik people are one of the many ethnic minorities in this country. They are Caucasians, there are about 900 in this village, a few thousand in the world. And they have a unique language and culture. I am Yusuf. My name is Joseph. I am from Hinalik. Hinalik is beautiful. Make yourself at home. In the South Caucasus mountain range is one of the highest and most remote villages of the country. With about 2,000 individuals, the Kinalog people are considered ethnically Caucasians, although they do practice the Islamic faith. Even in this small community, there are separate quarters with different cemeteries. They speak their own language of Kaddish, as well as Azerbaijani, and some still speak Russian. During the period when the area was under the Soviet Union, an alphabet was created composed of 72 letters. The people have many legends about their origins. They consider themselves the first people on Earth. They also believe that Noah's Ark stopped on their mountain. Noah ordered everyone to leave the Ark and planted a local herb that is used in making paintings. The village name of Kinalog is based on the name of the herb and means the place where the plant grows. Nearby are beautiful waterfalls and new mountain recreational resorts. This village is a popular place to visit for foreigners and urban Azerbaijanis. Hi, I'm Daniel from Hungary, Budapest. I'm uh, 24 years old and first I heard about Azerbaijan in Turkey on the Middle East Technical University where I had many friends from Azerbaijan and that was the point I got very interested in the country, so I came here. My name is Gnel. My name is Jawahir. We are from Baku. We are uh, we tourists uh, here. We are tourists here. As we travel from one historic place to another, we stop for lunch at a lovely new restaurant featuring traditional food and interesting architecture and sculptures. There have been Christians in this region for over 2,000 years. The ethnic group known as Albanian Udi, with about 10,000 individuals, built this church in the 1700s. They restored it a few years ago. They practiced the Eastern Orthodox traditions. My name is Robert Mobili. I'm the chairman of the Albanian Udi community. The Udis were one of the first Christian nations in the world. Our community appeared in this region and we still keep the Christian traditions in our fatherland. The modern Udis have kept the traditions of the ancient Albanian church, which was established in the area in the 4th and 5th century. Their Christian faith was started from the teachings of one of Christ's 12 apostles, St. Bartholomew. This Christian culture is very rich and many churches can be found throughout the region. For a few centuries, Christianity was the official religion of the state. The Albanian Udi Christian Church is considered an apostolic church that practices the Eastern Orthodox traditions. 
When Islam became the established religion of the area, the Udis were one of the few Christian groups to continue to practice their Christian faith. This church was utilized until 1836. Then the Tsarist Russians occupied the Caucasus, and the Russians gave this church to the Armenian Orthodox Christian Church, thus uniting the Armenian and the Udi Albanian churches. Many ethnic Udis at that time then immigrated to Georgia or converted to Islam. For those who stayed in Azerbaijan and continued to practice Christianity, they practiced their traditions at their homes. During the 20th century, when the Soviet Union controlled the region, the Soviets discouraged all religions and promoted atheism. But when Azerbaijan again became independent a few decades ago, they encouraged all ethnic groups to maintain their traditions and help preserve the historic structures. Restoration of the church was started by the anthropologist Thor Heyerdahl. He obtained assistance from his Norwegian government. Now many nonprofit organizations and the Azerbaijani government help with the restoration and maintenance of this church. I then asked the community leader how he feels about being a Christian in a predominantly Muslim country. To say the truth, we don't have any problems, because here you can feel how the historic wheel of the Christian faith is being turned. There has been no problem being a Christian in a Muslim country. They have many Bibles in different languages. The Azerbaijani language, their local Udi language, and Russian. Cheki is one of the most ancient towns in the country. Even though it has a new section, this old city has the Khan's Palace, an Albanian church, mosque, and other significant places. The caravan Sarai was where merchants in the 17 and 1800s stayed. It was an inn for themselves and their animals. In the 1900s, this place was in disuse, but a few decades ago, they made it a new hotel. Sheki was one of the main trading cities on the Silk Road from east to west. Due to its geographical position, it is still a major city of commerce and has many historic places worth seeing, as well as lots of wonderful arts and crafts. This caravan, Sarai, from the 18th century, was built as a fort as well as serving as a roadside inn. It is now both a hotel and a tea house. This is one of the earliest churches in the region. As an Orthodox Christian church, it was built in the 400s and was used until the 600s when the area was conquered by Islam. Now it's a folk art museum. The Albanian Christian church in Sheki has been converted to a museum. Inside, one can admire the unique architecture and also can see many of the typical arts and crafts of the region. Also on display are mannequins wearing many of the gorgeous costumes that were traditionally worn before Western clothing became the norm. Across the street is the Ethnographic and Historic Museum, which has exhibits featuring the native flora and fauna of the area. The Sheiki Ethnographic and Historical Museum not only shows us some of the life of the human beings, but we get to see some of the wildlife that's found in the area. The natural history section of the museum uses the old style of display, but I like these exhibits because we see the variety of plants, wood, rocks, and even animals, from amphibians to the bear, deer, rabbits, and birds. 
you really get an understanding of what is found in the area. This case is made out of copper. It's called Hamam Fase. It was used by women when a woman was going to the bathhouse. The bathhouse was a place for people to socialize and also to show her richness, her beauty. They were putting on all their jewelry and best dresses. And then when they were processing to the bathing, they were taking off all their belongings, all the jewelry, and putting it in these cases so servants couldn't steal them. Over here you can see these are called shakbush. They were uh, used to serve rice, like this. Some people confuse it with a helmet, but still it had its a completely different purpose. Near the museums is a shebeka a workshop where the artisans display how they are creating beautiful lattice for the glass windows and building facades. This workshop is owned by a family who has been making shebekas for four generations. Shebeka is unique and very typical of Azerbaijan. This family helped restore the Sheikhi Khan's palace, which is our next stop. Sheikhi is the town located in the northwestern part of the country. It is 223 miles from the capital city of Baku. The climate is very pleasant due to the surrounding mountains. This palace was built in the mid-1700s, when Sheiki received their independence. The ruler of this new state had the title of a Khan, which means a warlord or a general. After the people received their independence, the construction of the Sheikhi Fort began. The Summer Palace is the only remaining structure from the larger palatial complex. Restoration began in the 20th century through to 2004. The building is renowned for its lavish decoration of the exterior and interior. In the 1700s, there were many different city-states. This was the summer palace of one of the rulers. They were known as Khans. In the 1800s, the Tsar of Russia took over the territory, used the building for administrative purposes, and now it's a museum. One of the interesting features of the construction is that no concrete, glue, or nails were used. This was the king's waiting room, which was used for men. This and other rooms were used by the royal family and their entourage. Notice the closets, which kept the sleeping mattresses that were put on the floor at nighttime. Another interesting feature are the doors that have a block of wood that was used to keep the cold wind out. The ornate chimney was used for both heating and cooling. The ceiling decorations have nearly 5,000 pieces. Some of the window decorations are very typical and are called shemeka. While the palace was built in two years, the decorations took about eight years. Each one of the rooms has its own style. The paintings are all unique because the artists had the opportunity to explore their artistic freedom. It's very interesting to come here to, to Azerbaijan, especially to, to Sheikhi. It's uh, very impressive to look at a house like this. Very interesting, the paintings and the whole construction. Very good. The frescoes each have their own meaning. For example, this fresco shows deer and wolves running together. That means coexistence and peace between the powerful and the weak. Up on the ceiling, you can see mythical figures of creatures, such as the one with a woman's head and a lion's body holding a sword. That is a symbol of the fact that women can be as powerful as men. On other walls, paintings show other mythical creatures, such as one holding a crown on a head, and on the other side, not wearing a crown. There are many animals represented. The fish means strength, health, and wealth that is all coming and going. 
The fish also symbolize that wealth and power is as slippery as a fish. In the king's throne room is a fresco with over 8,000 figures. Each human face is different. This is the queen's waiting room. It certainly makes me feel like royalty being here. As a major tourist site, we meet visitors from around the world. At the moment, we are here on vacation, and we decided to come and stay in Sheikh for a while. Azerbaijan is a big country, 9 million population, so I hope you enjoy your time here. Yay! Welcome to Azerbaijan! Traveling through Azerbaijan has shown us the stunning contrast in landscapes and culture. Americans are welcome here. Visit this Euro-Asian country for a unique adventure. On behalf of our nonprofit organization, Educational Communications and Econews, I'm Nancy Perlman wishing you a natural, unspoiled environment.